After years of helping online businesses make more money by advising them on their taxes and finances, I've now made it my mission to reach as many profitable online businesses as possible to help them save on their taxes and make more money. On my quest, I bring you proven and real profitable online business owners, and we dig into how they do it. All right, here we are again. This is The Few, The Proud, The Profitable. I'm Micah Frame. So this podcast, what we do is we spend about 15 minutes or so talking to online businesses that are actually profitable. We know there are a lot of pretenders in this space, a lot of people who exaggerate, if not downright fabricate their successes. So what we do here is we exclusively talk to six and seven figure business owners and online business owners. So today we got Steven Summers. Steven, thanks for being on. Mike, thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited to be part of your new project, and I'm also excited to be one of the few who are profitable. So I look forward to chatting about that. Yeah, it's, it's a real minority, despite what everyone claims on their Facebook posts. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone's a millionaire on Facebook, right? Oh, mi- billionaires even. <laughs> it, it's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, all right, so we're going to ask about 15 questions, or five questions, 15 minutes. So the first one is a couple of the sentences. Tell us who you are. Tell us what you do. Sure. So Stephen Summers, my name. I live in Ireland, and I am the co-founder and CEO of Marketplace Superheroes, Superhero Freight, and Superhero Office. We're all about the superheroes around here. So we basically, at a very simple level, we teach people all over the world how to sell their own branded products on Amazon on a global level. And we take care of all of our freight for our clients with our superhero freight business. And we also, in the UK, take care of a lot of the accounting for our clients with superhero office. We don't do it in the US. And Mike is actually one of our partners that we refer some business to in the US as well. And uh, yeah, we've, we're now an eight-figure business. If you want to look at cumulative revenue, we're due about three to five million a year. I say that, that range because it's growing consistently. Yeah yearly with marketplace superheroes and our other businesses and yeah we've won five two comic club awards with click funnels we're kind of uh, somewhat unknown in the space we don't shout about it because we're busy growing our business right. uh, though i was shouting a lot more so that's who we are yeah well and having worked with a lot of amazon businesses through the year and, and seeing a lot of courses y'all are really experts in the space mm-hmm. what i always warn people against when they're starting on amazon are these too good to be true? The, these things where they find these little hacks in Amazon that work for three to six months, but they don't understand the whole organizational structure. And what ends up happening is whatever hole they found gets plugged and then it just sort of dissipates away. And the, as quick as the money came, it goes away again. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, at this point in time, you know, I've run and then do run multiple businesses and multiple different you know, verticals and niches and whatever. And the thing I can tell everybody listening, no matter where you are in business, there's always like a potential you could exploit a loophole for a period of time, be it in Facebook ads or whatever. Yeah. But they're all closed down. So yeah, structurally speaking, you're much better building your business on proper structure, proper offer structure, proper business structure and all that. Which again, it's not the exciting part, but like that is the key. You know, I speak to really successful online business owners all the time. I do coach some. And, you know, some of the guys I speak to, they're really well up on, you know, tax strategies and they're well up on taking care of their business properly because at that level you have to be. And I, and I always laugh, Mike, like sometimes people think it's an online business, therefore it's somehow different to like an old school air quote anybody just listening business which is complete nonsense you know online businesses are as legit as the next business nowadays i mean it's 2019 soon to be 2020 depending on when you're when when you're listening to this so you know the world is changing and you know it's podcasts like this people like micah by the way who i think you gotta listen to because i can tell you now having built businesses i made some huge mistakes taking too much money out of the business paying way too much corporate uh, personal taxes, sorry, in the likes of Ireland here. And I've learned with good tax planning as well that you can really change the game when you get that kind of help. But anyway, that's just a yeah. side note. Oh, well, yeah. Every, in hindsight, every mistake I've made could have been avoided had I actually hired an expert in whatever field I was working in. So 100%, 100% agreed on that. 
All right, question two. What is the best thing about having a profitable online business? Yeah, I, I'm going to kind of go away. I don't know if anybody's going to go this way, but the way I see it is um, it's all about the platform that you're building. And if you're not building a platform, and again, it depends what your goal is, right? Number one, I'm assuming everybody listening here, your goal is to build your own business and your own platform. If you're building a business and you're leveraging traffic like Amazon's, etc., that's great. Uh, eventually, some people, they move, move on to their own platform. But I'm going to kind of assume it's a slightly different audience uh, for the podcast here. So that's why I say building a platform of your own, if you're building like an educational business or whatever, is important. So the best thing about a profitable business is it enables you to continue building your platform, yeah. which then enables you to keep on increasing your profits, which is what it's all about. Right. Yeah, we were talking about that. I was on a call with Robert Ricky and Marlon and all those guys. And we were talking about this morning just about how being well capitalized is so important because then you can roll that back in. The people who seem to be in the most trouble are the ones who have the least funds, so they need to recover it so quickly. Exactly. So if you've got ongoing revenue, then you have the luxury then to keep – you just have such a leg up. It's hard to quantify exactly how helpful that is. Well, yeah, like without be if we weren't a profitable business, we could never have taken our resources and started Superhero Freight, right. which is a massive undertaking, but we were able to self-fund that through our own money and our own business. And I think yeah. that's another side point. The great thing about being profitable is you can reinvest in your business right. and grow long-term. But a lot of people, as you just said there, they don't think long-term. So long-term, profitable, way to go. Right. 100%. All right, number three, one of the things that I hear a lot from online business owners is one of the things we deal a lot with our clients is managing cash flow can be difficult. So you especially, you don't just have the one business, you're dealing with multiple things, some of which are capital intensive. Yeah. So, so how do y'all manage cash flow? Yeah, well, again, you know, Robert would be the, he's the main financial controller at the moment, although we've just brought on a new one recently. And really, the key with cash flow for us anyway, is you've got to have a really good handle on what your receivables are going to be. And you also got to have a really good handle on what your costs are. Obviously, I mean, that's very basic cash flow advice. But the, the, at a very base level, I see business owners out there, they're not plotting out their future receivables that they're expecting. They're not plotting out and it's even a simple spreadsheet what your future expected costs are going to be. Right. They can't see any issues coming down the line. So at a very basic level, and the most important thing is to have that future projections cash flow sheet in your business so you know what's going on, you know what's going to go on. And also then it's really important that you just understand like the profitability of what a sale means, you know, and how much you're going to collect, what you're going to pay out. Right. Then you can easily roll in when you do a promotion. You then are forecasting that, yeah, we would expect in October we're running this promotion. We would expect it's going to do this to our cash flow. So then what we have to do is when we have a sheet in place. We're able to obviously measure the effect of the great promotion, not so great promotion on cash flow. And for us, honestly, Mike, you know, we, we used to uh, use an overdraw uh, facility for our business but as we got better at business and we got more capitalized our platform grew so we were able to make more offers to our existing and non uh, and non buyers we were able to continue to keep cycling up our profitability we were able to keep cycling up our cash flow with profitable sales very important and that was a result of that you know our cash flow issues are not as big as they ever used to be that said though and uh, we do have to and we could be we could be doing this in a better way we do share you know uh, costs through different businesses and stuff like that and we're restructuring as groups and all that kind of jazz which you're very, very much an expert on so so for me i would say yeah the, the, the mistake we've made sometimes is you know we don't structurally make the changes early enough that are going to be needed down the line which which yeah. is important for cash flow too because you know if you're not well set up as a group structure if you're in multiple companies you can't pass profits and losses between businesses and all that jazz but yeah that's yeah. that's a little well, especially if you have different ownership structures between them. If you have the same partners in each one, yeah, you're co-mingling funds and that's not the cleanest thing in the world to do, but you're not causing any issues either. If you've got a third or fourth or fifth partner in business B, when business C is the one that needs money and business A is the one that has it, yeah. you can work around it, but it just gets a lot stickier. 
So exactly, yeah. And I've seen that to be true uh, consistently in our career, you know. And again, like no one's perfect. I'm not perfect, you know. Yeah. We're we're growing very successful companies, but sometimes, yeah, you can you can trade like you don't over trade, but you can grow so quickly that the structures you put in place aren't fit for purpose when the business grows. And thankfully, we've changed those things. But yeah, absolutely, that cash flow plus structure is very important. Yeah, completely. All right, Super boring, but very important. Yeah. All right, so fourth question. So a couple of minutes. Just give me a tip that every online business owner should know. Yeah, a very simple. I mean, it's so basic, but people don't listen to it. But if we're talking about digital businesses specifically, I would say be building your, your email list for sure and your audience. So your audience is key. And, and an audience can include an email list. It can include a retargeting list for, for ads and stuff like that. It can include a, a messenger list on Facebook now. Anything that where you can, you can house your audience. You've yeah. got to be building those contact points. And, and I see a lot of people in this industry that, I, that I, I speak to that are maybe going to become partners of ours. They have none of this stuff in place, which is shocking but true. Right. Huge yeah. mistake, by the way. Well, it's crazy. We had one business where it was an event space business. Yeah. So people are actually booking tickets online. So you have this huge volume of people. Then we find out that for years, they're never collecting an email address, the e which is the easiest thing to do when you're getting the tickets delivered electronically. The whole thing is right there, but it's literally just a matter of collecting it on purchase. Never happens. I know. And I've seen it in other businesses like, you know, they're growing their Instagram account. Uh, which is fine, but then you know, right. you know, exactly. you know their, their reach is whatever it is whenever Instagram decides to turn that down. Right. And so, the problem whereas things you control in business as much as you can, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take control of them and take ownership of them as well. And I just, I can't believe it, but even in this day and age, I'm seeing businesses not doing simple things like this. And if you can't communicate with your customers, uh, you know, that's not a good thing, it's a very, yeah. very bad thing. Well, and so many people in this world seem to live on Facebook, and it's crazy to me. I get that that's a great lead gen source. You should use it as, mu as much as makes sense for you. But the people who are offloading that into something they own, people who they've had these really successful business pages and not even counting the fact that it gets throttled, it just gets banned one day. A couple people who sold very successfully on their personal pages, Facebook eventually got tired of something they did yeah. and they're gone and they had 5, 000, the 5,000 connections plus that another couple thousand following them and it's just gone. And the fact that you're not getting a backup plan of any kind is pretty amazing to me, especially since so many of these people are internet marketers at their core. Yeah. And, I, and again, that comes back to my first point earlier on, like what is your real goal? You know, yeah. if, you're, if your goal in business is just, look, I just want to go on. I want to make some money. I don't want too much hassle. Well, and yeah, maybe you don't listen to what we're saying. But again, like if you're looking to build a big business and that's what the listeners of this podcast are looking to do, yeah, you got to take full ownership of these, uh -huh. these people and bring them into your world. And, and again, that's just simple business advice that a lot of people choose to ignore and you shouldn't. So there you go. That's my answer. All right. All right. Awesome. All right. Last question, man. It's, you got a choice of one or two things. Either what's the craziest thing you've seen sold online or what's the craziest tactic you've seen for someone trying to sell something online? That's a really good question. So the craziest thing I've sold online or the craziest tactic I've seen somebody use to sell something yeah. online. I have to think about that. Well, certainly um, the craziest things I've seen people sell online that work, by the way, is that, if that's okay as an answer. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've seen, I mean, I, I, there's a client of ours at Marketplace Superheroes. I always laugh. Uh, I, I, and we know this person. He sells this stuff. One of his products he sold for a long time, and he still does, were the, um, the little things that cover the feet of a washing machine to stop the washing machine from, like, scraping the floor. Yeah. And I was like, it's so boring and so stupid. But, yeah, people buy this stuff, right? So that's probably the craziest thing, silliest thing I've seen. Yeah. Personally, my own two eyes that, like, worked really well that was just so boring it was incredible and i suppose the craziest tactics that i've seen online that don't always work uh, the craziest tactic right now out there i think is this kind of 
spam culture that it's on channels like LinkedIn and places like that. You know, I think it's so funny that, and there's some people who've got a great outreach strategy on places like that, but it's crazy because people don't understand, they're not, they're not understanding human nature. They're not understanding how business works. They're not understanding how to leverage the, 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 the channel. And they're just spamming people. Yeah. Not understanding that they're actually leaving so much opportunity on the table. And just as a side note to this, you know, I would say the best advice I can give as an antidote to that for people listening today is like when you're growing your business, you absolutely should be growing your network of valued connections as well. So Mike, you and I, right? We didn't know each other a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, Adam, our, our a mutual friend, very successful guy, put us in touch. And then immediately I tried to find ways to give Mike a value, right? So how can I give right. this guy value? So can I get him clients? What can I do? Equally, Micah has reciprocated over the time. You know, we're working together on different things. And all of a sudden, this small connection we have became really valuable both ways. Right. And I think that that's a real problem in, in, the, in the world now. People are not looking at win-win situations where you can profitably grow a really solid network of people. Who That's the thing. We're talking about growing profitable businesses. The, the simplest way to grow a profitable business continually is keep building a profitable network of people around you. Mm -hmm. Then look for ways to create leverage, positive leverage between the relationships that you have. And when you do that, when you become a connector for other people and they become a connector for you, you start getting introduced to all these really successful, profitable people. It's amazing. Yeah, and, and I'm not a sales expert, a networking expert, marketing, any of that. But it's funny to me where people sort of, forget human, just basic human nature, that because it's an online interaction, they just, they forget the way you would interact if you were in person. Because yeah. I was trying to do better networking, so I was just starting to hit up people on my friends list, or occasionally people just, you know, spam me, which is fine, and it's, but it's always fascinating to me where I think it's people, it's a lack of patience almost. Yes. You just want stuff quickly. So you don't want to go through the process and the work of getting to know someone, building a relationship, then them liking you. It's like you just want to fast forward all the way to, okay, now I made money off this. So yes. you're starting off with the sales pitch, which I'm sure that, I mean, cold calling works to some percentage, but I'm just... I can't imagine that's ever been super successful for anyone, but that seems to be a lot of what people try to do. Well, it's old school, right? And it worked for a while because there was no other better way, right? Whereas we're in the permission economy now, really, where yeah, that's, that's the big thing. And I think we're in the value economy as well now. And I would say that, you know, I, I started going to internet marketing events years ago. I don't go to very many now because honestly, most of them are terrible. Right. Some of them are great. And I'm not yeah, I haven't been to one in a few years. It's, it's tough to yeah. make it. Work. Some of them are bad, you know, but some of them are very good too, I will say. Yeah. And I'm not mentioning any names, but some are really good. And, yeah. and some of the better ones I was at, you know, I was at one in 2014, I think it was now. And I, I met a couple of people there, like three or four people there, uh, who to this day, so five years later, I'm still actively doing business with these people. And the, yeah. the way I got to know those people in the first place was I didn't go running around to everybody in the room. I just picked... You know, a few people who I chat with who I thought they are, they're cool. They look like they're trying to do something. Yeah. And sure enough, it's five years later. They're more successful. I'm more successful. And we're helping each other out consistently. Yeah. So that's huge. And again, for doing deals, you know, like we're talking about, again, profitable deals. You know, people will promote your stuff. They'll promote what you're doing. You can promote them. But it'll only happen when you build a really good personal relationship. You know, I've hardly ever been in a situation where, I promoted something for somebody who I didn't meet because, because, you know, even though we're in an online world right now, it's still very much a person to person uh, situation because the, the thing you got to understand is you can't be making relationships with companies. You got to be making relationships with people. Mm -hmm. and that's the very same thing. When you're selling something, you're not selling to a company. You're always selling to a person yeah. so as much as you possibly can. People listening today, like start thinking about that. I, I talked about this just lately in a call. I was doing a training call for some of my clients. And it's like, who here honestly can say they have a solid network of people that they could dip into at any time. And if anything bad happened in their personal or business career, they could rebuild their career 
maybe not overnight, but in a relatively short period of time, just through their relationships. And most yeah. people say, oh, I don't. right? And yeah. that is a massive mistake that you've yeah. got to fix. No, that's perfect, Ryan. All right. Well, that does it. So thanks again. Really appreciate you having, having you here, you taking the time to do it. For people who want to find you, what's your website? What's the best way for them to get in touch with you if they're looking to work with you? Yeah. So um, our Amazon education side of the business is marketplacesuperheroes.com. Uh, also, I've got a site I'm working on for myself. It's uh, stevensummers.com with a P-H um, and then S-O-M-E-R-S. Again, because I'm, I'm not American, so we've got a weird spelling. Uh, and then, of course, people can add me on Instagram, Stephen J. Summers, if you want to ask me a question. I have a very small Instagram following, so we'll actually respond there. And that's it. That's, they're the best places. But i uh, love to speak to anybody. If you have any questions about anything, scaling your business, feel free to reach out. I'm more than happy to help. Okay. Awesome, man. Appreciate you being here. All right. To everybody watching, this has been The Few, The Proud, The Profitable. So just look next time. We'll be having another expert here just in a few days. Thanks for watching.